welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I am doing the Demi Wallet by Lynn's Handmade. Um, I didn't do the zipper tabs on the end, uh, but I did do everything else. So we've got the clear card ID slots in both sections. Um, and I've done a magnet clasp closure instead of a twist lock because I don't have a twist lock at the moment. Uh, but yeah, if you would like to see how to make this super cute wallet, please stay tuned. Alright guys, so what I've done so far off camera is cut all the pieces and interface them all. So I have used a non-woven medium iron-on interfacing for most of the pieces. And then the outside flap and the back main, like the outside main panel, I have used Formfuse 1600. Um... So in the same fashion as the NCW, I have taken the measurements that they use for the pockets and I have transferred them onto um, a manila folder. So I can now just flatten this out, oh sorry, lay this down and we want to go all the way to the top and then I'm just going to use... Uh, a couple of wonder clips to hold it in place at the top. So I'm going to go line it up at the front and the side like that. And then pop two wonder clips at the top. And then what I do is I'm going to give it a quick iron just to heat the fabric so that it's going to bend easier. So then I'm going to take my fabric and bend it. through the slots like so. So that, for me, is a lot quicker and easier than having to measure every time. If you were only ever going to make one of these, which I doubt because they are awesome, um, you don't need to make this pattern. You can just measure them every time. But I obviously make a lot of everything. So this is just a much quicker way. So once I've done that, I can just slide the cardboard out and then I'm just going to give it an extra press. So the cardboard's like a temporary dint. And then I press from the front. And then I flip it over and I'll press from the back as well. Um, so this is going to make it super squashed, which is what we want. And also going to really get those creases in there. Now if you have a heat press, you should put it in the heat press. So once it's in here, you just take the top clips off. And then you can heat press it and that will squish it down wonderfully as well. So that's all done. So now we're going to go over to the sewing machine. Alright, so I am using my M40 nylon, bonded nylon thread from Vitamin Threads, which I will put a link for the description. Uh, I've got my Teflon foot on, so I don't really need it for this pattern because I'm not using any vinyl. But I tend to always just use my Teflon foot because it's easier. So now I'm just going to top stitch. So I'm going to put my stitch length on three and a half and just top stitch, making sure that I back stitch at the start to lock it in across all of those lines. Now you don't have to back stitch, but I find that the stitches aren't going to accidentally come out if we do. So I'm just using a 1 8 seam allowance, so the middle of my foot. I'm chopping off my tails as I go so that they don't get in the way later. And then stitch, back stitch. So that's those done. Now you want to get a ruler and uh, I'm going to use my friction pen or anything that's erasable. So what we want to do is we want to find the center and we're going to rule a line down the center. So this will be your cut line. Like so. And then I'm going to go one eighth of an inch each side of that cut line and I'm going to rule another line. So these are going to be our stitch lines so that everything holds together for us. And I'm going to stitch from the bottom to the top 
along those stitch lines. What is vibrating? I think I'm Lee Hannah. I'm leaning against my other table, so we're getting a vibrating sound that I'm not okay with. There we go, all fixed. So I'm gonna make sure I back stitch at that as well, because again, we don't want anything to come undone. Um, and I'm just still using my three and a half longer stitch length because we're not gonna see this. This is just a basting stitch, so nothing moves. I'm going top to bottom. You could also go bottom to top again if you wanted to. And then I'm also going to come along these edges and go down the edges as well. So this is just going to hold everything in place. So when I cut this, they're not going to flap open. Grab your scissors and then cut along that center line. And I should have used the other scissors for this. Those ones are awesome, but they don't like layers. So now we've got two pieces. Oh, I also should have mentioned, which I'm sure you see at the start of the video, I am doing the clear plastic. So I just got some clear plastic from Spotlight. Um, it's not the thickest one, it's just like a medium grade one, so I'm using that as my clear card slots for the outside. So one is going to go across there like that, and then we're just going to tack that down in the same fashion we did the sides. So you don't want to obviously do the top, that will seal it, and the little divot part goes towards the card slots. So we're going to put that in there, so that's just going to hold it in place for us, and then I'm going to do the same to the other one. So I'm lining it up with the bottom edges, and then I'm just stitching within the seam allowance so that we won't see this. This is literally just a tacking or basting stitch. So I'm doing about a 1-8 seam allowance, or thereabouts. There we go. Oh, I'll be right back. Hold on one sec. I'm back. I just had to grab uh, the instructions to remember what this length that I need to cut and my ruler. So. You're going to copy what the pattern says, and we're just going to chop off a little bit of one set of the card slots. So the instructions for how much we cut off are in the pattern, so I'm not going to reveal that on camera because it's not my pattern to do so. And just chop off that little bit. And so now that one is the top. So then what we're going to do is we're going to stick a bottom to top and we're going to stitch these together across here. So I'm now going to drop down to a two and a half stitch length because now I'm doing joining things. So I'm going to stitch and then I'm going to back stitch and then I'm going to go all the way across. Now, if you've put the clear plastic in here, you won't be able to iron this. Um, so don't try, you will melt the plastic to your iron and all shall be disastrous. So now I've got one nice long lot of pockets. So now we need to start adding our other pieces. So we need our little accent piece. Now just a tip for you, I stuffed up cutting these over and over and over because I wasn't paying enough attention. I was too busy chatting. Uh, but for me to get the pattern the right way, I put the pattern pieces writing down on the back of the fabric. So if you trace with the fabric print up, you want to have the pattern pieces facing up. If you are like me and you trace on the back, you need to make sure that your pattern pieces are down. Otherwise, your 
um, wallet will come out open the other way. So if you're right-handed, you're most likely to throw your things on the floor. So that's just a little tidbit of advice that I have learnt from experience. Um, so anyway, we're going to now attach the accent panel, which is our funky skinny one. So we're going to go right sides together and stitch it down the side with the seam allowance that the pattern says. So now we've got our one side there and I am actually going to top stitch that open so that it looks nice and I like, I like a top stitch. So I'm going back up to my three and three quarter stitch length and then I'm just going to stitch one eighth of an inch along that edge to give it like a nice decorative touch. It's also going to hold all the pattern pieces flat for you. And again, I'm chopping off all my tails as I go. So then I'm going to go back to a two and a half stitch length and I'm going to grab the, what's this, the accent piece. So we're going to stitch it to the other side. Um, I'm going to have the lining on top while I sew. It doesn't really matter, but that's just how I like to do it. So we're going to do the same seam allowance across there. Like so. And then we're going to open that out fold it so it joins to the other side. So now it should be beautiful on both sides. So that's how you're going to get that seam allowance there. So you just want to line that up and then we're going to top stitch within the seam allowance. So I'm also going to want to tack this down with some clips so it doesn't shift on me. like so and like so like that so we've got this nice little accent piece down the side so I'm just stitching right on the edge just to tack it down no it won't go anywhere so there we go so that is now our card slots done. So I'm going to pop that aside and grab another piece. So now I'm going to do my top flap. So I have Form Fuse 1600 on both of these to make them a little bit stiffer. So I'm just going to put them right sides together. Uh, you can pin it. I actually won't be doing that. But you can pin it if you want to. Make sure that you backstitch at the start. And I'm at my two and a half stitch length because it's a joining stitch that we're doing, not a decorative one. And I'm just going to go nice and slowly on this curve so it's neat. Sometimes we rush curves and then they're not even and then it looks dodgy. So I'm just going to take my time with that because it is quite a tight little curve. But I think I did pretty well. So now I'm just going to grab my zigzag scissors or my pinking shears and just chop along all of that top half go around the bend and chop it off so now just where the curves are it's nice and chopped and so now it will be easier to turn so now i'm going to put my piece of paltex in or my hard um, heavy interfacing that i do and i'm going to iron mine in so i'm just going to hit pause while i do that because uh, it just slots in and then irons down. So I will be right back. So that is now all ironed in there. Um, so I have ironed it to the side that I am going to use as the inside or the lining piece because that's going to give us extra stability when we install our magnet, which we are doing now. So I have grabbed my craft knife. This one is by Kaiser Craft, so you can just use any one that's in the craft scrapbooking section of spotlight so my stuff's on this side so i'm just going to grab this and place it in the center 
and mark my lines, stab my holes. Oh, no, wait, that's on the wrong side. Did it again. Okay, so it's on this side. There we go. So in the center, this is why we use erasable friction texture. Stab it through and then I'm just going to use a little bit of fray stopper glue because this is a fabric and I don't want it to break on whoever ends up owning it. So I'm going to stab my magnet parts through, stick my hands inside and put the gasket on the back and then I'm going to bend them outwards. So now that is nice and flat. So we install the other magnet at the end. The pattern doesn't actually give you a spot to put it. So if you place your magnet in the wrong spot, it actually won't matter if it's higher or lower because it's adjustable to the pattern. So I'm just gonna quickly press that to get rid of the wrinkles. And then, I'm going to put my stitch length up to three and three quarters and I'm going to top stitch around the flap. Um, I'm having the right side up because I always like the look of the top of all the stitching. So we're going to make sure we back stitch and lock those stitches in so it doesn't come undone on us later. And I should also point out that the Peltex or the, the heavy stuff you put on the inside isn't meant to come all the way down to the bottom. So they've deliberately made it shorter so that our final stitching across there will be less heavy. So that is now our flap done. So we should have our... Um, what are they called? Card slots with the backing and then this. So we are up to the construction. So this is my lining piece on the inside of the wallet. So I'm just going to line those up with the edges like so and clip that down. There's lots of fun crazy colour combinations you can do. I've just picked a very simple two colour lot um, and the way I've done it is I wanted a little bit of accent here and here and then you go into the card or the money section. Uh, you could also make this piece this fabric or you could do these accents in a solid different colour. But Your flap needs to go face down. I've only ever made this once so I very clearly forgot. So I just had to go and check while I was finding my zip. All right, so I'm not doing the zipper tabs on the side because I want to get the most out of my zip as possible because it is already so small. I don't want to have even less room. So I'm just going to line that up along there. And then I'm going to take my outside piece because it's going to be the easiest piece to do. And I'm going to stitch that along that edge. Making sure it's all lined up. You can definitely pin it if you want to. Make sure you back stitch at both ends. And then I'm going to top stitch just the top panel. Like so. And then chop off all my tails. So then that's one side of my zipper pocket. And then I'm going to do the other side. So this side I'm going to pin because there's a lot more going on. So I'm going to pin that across like that and then before I stitch it all together I'm actually going to top stitch this down as close to that edge as I can just so it's out of my way. I've got less clips and it's one less thing I now have to hold. So now I can just lay that directly on top and I know that my panels aren't going to slip on me because that's super important. You don't want that. Okay, so now I'm going to stitch 
across there, making sure I backstitch at the start, like so, and backstitch at the end, and then flip all of that over and top stitch along there. Now that's quite bulky, um, so take your time. So now that it's time to decide on which way you want your zipper coming. So the zipper is now in. Um, so I want my zipper to come across this way. So I want it to be on the left, so I'm going to thread it on at the right. So I'm going to crack the zipper just a little bit. Now if you've done zipper tabs, obviously put your zip on before you stitch all of that and then just move the zipper tab around so it doesn't distort your stitching. So I'm going to try and do this without my zipper jig that my beautiful husband made me. It can be done, it's just a little bit more fiddly. They're not a necessity but they really do help. All right, I can't get that. I am too accustomed to having it now. All right. So I'm just going to pop it in there, grab my two sides and feed them through nice and evenly. Like so. So I've just got it on the edge. So I'm going to zip it across to probably two-thirds of the way and then open it so I want to have an opening but I don't want the ends to be completely open so now we're just going to put the flap all the way over to the other side so we're going to encase everything inside it so with our clips that we've already got we're just going to add the outside piece of fabric into it as well now that outside piece, I did use Form Fuse 1600 because I do like a nice firm wallet. Um, but we do also still have to put Peltex in. So if you're just using a medium woven interfacing, that will also work because we use Peltex. Or whatever super heavy. You might use Buckram as well. Um, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of heavy things. So also something that we want to be conscious of is where that flap is. We don't want to stitch over that flap. So I'm putting my clips up to the end of it so that I'm not going to stitch over it. And I'm also going to make sure that my zipper, because I haven't done the zipper ends, I'm going to push them down so that they face the lining, so that they're not sticking up. So, I'm making sure that both these sides have gap around the zipper. And then I'm going to go back to a two and a half stitch length. Move that out of the way. There we go. Alright, so what I'm actually going to do is with this here, I'm going to taper it. So I'm going to start in and come out like this so that this space is actually shorter. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it's going to sit nice and flat without wrinkles. So I'm not going to taper it a lot, just, just a little bit. So back stitch. So it's probably only, you know what, I can measure it. It is only half an inch. So I've only just done a little bit extra, but that little bit of extra is going to help very very shortly so now I'm using my fingers which you can't see because of the way I've got the camera but I'm using my fingers to make sure I'm not stitching over that flap so I'm stitching right next to it stitching nice and slowly making sure I'm using my seam allowance properly and then when I get too many clips, I'm just going to tidy them up so that they're not in my way. So now I'm feeling for that flap. Now I'm going to do a second pass of this because my machine has actually come away a little bit too far. So I got, I don't know if you can see that, but when I got to the flap, it kind of veered off a little bit. 
so I do want to get closer. So I'll show you a way to do that, because obviously this foot's not going to cut it. So we're going to switch to our zipper foot, because the zipper foot's going to allow us to get that little bit closer. We obviously still want to make sure we're not going to stitch over it, but the zipper foot will get us as close as we want to without that bulk of the flap getting in our way. So I'm just going to, whoops, put my foot down. I'm just going to start back a little bit. I'm going to do a couple of stitches and back stitch to lock it in. And then again, I'm just going to feel for that and I'm going to straighten up my seam allowance to be right next to that flap. So it may not look like a big difference. But see the slightly closer line? That has then evened that up so that the side is going to be straight. So I'm now going to do that to the other side as well because my foot just didn't want to do it. So I'm going to go again, I'm going to have the outside piece on the top because that's the easiest way to feel for that flap. I'm making sure I'm not stitching through it and then just joining into that seam allowance. It may seem a little bit fidgety, but it's just because my foot didn't like it. Your foot might do it all quite lovely, uh, just mine didn't. So now I'm going to use my zigzag scissors, or my pinking shears, and I'm just going to go where all the curves are, which is only two, obviously, but we're just going to clip off that excess so that it's going to turn out and have a really nice curve. Then I'm going to grab some scissors, and I'm going to come and cut off this extra fabric down here, so along here and on the other side. So I've only veed in a very little bit. It's in total a, oh, not even a quarter inch. But when we turn this out, it's going to sit so much nicer. Alright, so then I'm going to reach my hand into the wallet. And I'm going to grab this back edge. So I'm going to push it in. And then grab it so it's like a poppet. Oh, that kind of looks like a worm. Anyway. And I'm going to attempt to pull that through. Now, this is quite thick because I have used the um, that clear ID window vinyl. So it is a little bit thicker down here. So I might actually start with a corner and pull the corner instead of the center. And then we're just going to slowly birth it. So I use my thumbs to push and I've got my fingers in here so that that is going to actually flip over everything. And you know you've got it made when everything is, when the lining's turned out, you'll be good to go. So we're just going to, we're not going to pull too hard because we don't want to break anything. Not that I think that this thread would break, but if you're using just normal sewing thread, make sure you're gentle. Okay, so then I'm just going to run my finger along those seams. Now these corners should turn out beautifully because we have trimmed off that excess. Fantastic. So then also when you push this in, when you pull it all the way to the sides, it should sit with no wrinkles because it's actually a little bit smaller than the space. So we're now nearly there. That's the wallet done. We just need to top stitch and put in a couple more things. So the first thing we need to do before we do anything is take our piece of Paltex or buckram or anything thick. You could use cardboard or um, clear cuttable plastic. And we want to pop that in here. So I'm going to pull this out and I want it to stick to the outside piece. So I'm going to fold it so that the shiny glue side is facing that piece and then I'm going to fold it in half and shove it in. Like that. So now I just need to maneuver it. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but I'm going to maneuver it so that it's sitting down on this edge. 
So it's sitting just below all of our seam lines up the top here and it's gone all the way to the bottom. So now I'm just going to go and do a nice slow and steady iron across that because it's going to get the wrinkles out of this side. It's going to stick that Peltex down um, and we don't want to touch the iron on this side because of our clear vinyl windows. If you didn't do them, by all means, press that side too. And if you have like a heat press, make sure you put it that side down and you can give the whole thing a nice squish. So again, I'm going to just hit pause while I go and do the ironing. Okay, so I've given that a nice press. Um, I also put the that fabric for the zipper pocket in and pressed it with that in as well to get it nice and flat. So now we're up to installing the other half of our magnet. Um, so how we do that is we fold this up to where we want it to be. So it's meant to come all the way up and be even across there. And then we fold that down. And so that's what it's going to look like. Uh, if you, you've got a little bit of wiggle room here. So if you wanted it, um, thicker here to allow for more bulk, you just slide this down. So you slide this part down until you're happy, but I want mine nice and firmly up there. So it's like a nice flat sandwich. So that's where I want it. So I'm just going to make sure that it is even before I go marking it. And then again, I'm going to use a friction pen so that if I wreck my marks, I can erase it. So I basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this up, see where it's touching and put a little dot. So that's where it's touching. So I just lifted it up a little bit, saw where it was touching and put my little dot. Oh, there's a piece of fluff. So now that I've got that, I can take my gasket and draw the two lines that I'm going to need to cut. And then I'm going to stick my hand into the wallet and hold it like this so that I'm not going to stab my hand. Uh, but the idea of my hand being in there is I'm lifting it away from this side so I don't stab too far through. So then I'm just going to use my knife to stab the two holes. And then while my hand's in there, I'm just going to put a dot of the glue, fray stopper glue, which you can get from most craft shops. Spotlight sells it, and I've had that bottle for so long. And then I'm just going to have to feel where the magnet goes and then bend the two prongs outwards. So that is now installed. Once your magnet's installed, you can pull out your zipper pocket section. And then I'm just going to fold over those raw edges and tuck them in. Now, keeping in mind, the more you tuck under, the smaller the pocket is. So you want to tuck it, but you don't want to have too much tuck because then you'll make your pocket considerably smaller. And I also want to go back to my other foot. Mission accomplished with the zipper foot. There's always a solution to the problem. So your foot might actually go over that fine. If you've got a walking foot, you're going to have no trouble going over it, but you also may have problems because you may stitch your flap in. So just be very, very conscious of that. All right. Tuck the edges in. You can um, clip it if you want to, or you can use pins or whatever floats your boat. I've got some of these. These would be great as well. I see a lot of people buy them from So Whatever in America. They are very cute, the rainbow ones. So these would also work here just to hold it down. Um, and then do a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back, and stitch right along that edge. So you want to get as close as you can to that edge without sewing off the end. Um, I also probably should have done that in a pink because then it is less noticeable 
but who's really going to look in the bottom of the coin section anyway? So we're going to tuck that in now. And then you just want to double check that all is going well, which it is. So now we just want to get rid of the fluff and top stitch around this edge. So I'm going to use a 1 8 seam allowance. I'm going to zip this into the middle so I don't actually accidentally catch it. And I'm going to start from, where do I want to start from? I'm going to start from here. So I'm up to a three and three quarter stitch length and I've manually cranked three and then I'm going back through that first hole and then I'm going to very slowly stitch around that edge. Now you don't have to do this step if you don't want to. If you're a beginner or you're worried you're going to wreck it, uh, by all means skip this step, but I love a good top stitch. I also think it's going to help squish this down really nicely. So we're going to go all the way up like that and then I'm going to go back through a couple of stitches beforehand because I can tell from that bulk because I didn't do the zipper tabs that my machine would go crooked if I tried to back stitch there. So to lock the stitches in, I just do the same as what I do at the start. So, trim that off. Melt any pokey outy ends you may have floating around. And there we go. One super adorable mini wallet. So the way I would hold it, because I'm right-handed, when I open it, I have my card section, or my, not my cards, my note section there. If you were left-handed, you would cut all the pieces in reverse, and then it opens in the opposite way, which I have one of those, because I wasn't paying attention the first time I tried one. So here's what it looks like if you cut them out the wrong way. It's on that side. There we go, you can do it left and right handed. The pattern does work, it just depends on how you cut it out. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will hopefully be posting another one tomorrow. Bye guys. <laughs>